We were talking about PCOS. Yes. What I've I've got a very close friend of mine that struggled a lot with PCOS, and I've been there with them um, as they've been diagnosed and as they've kind of battled with that over the years. But I'm aware that a lot of people struggle with PCOS. I think it's up to sort of 20% of the population. So officially people will say that it's about 10 to 13% of the population, but that 70% of people who have PCOS are undiagnosed. So much higher than either of those numbers you or I said is going to be the real number. And what is PCOS? There's a couple different ways that PCOS presents. So how I like to describe PCOS in essence is being born with more eggs in your vault. Okay, so if you're born with more eggs in your vault, you are going to send out more eggs every single month, right? Because you're sending out eggs in proportion to how many you have. Why do you have PCOS? Likely this is due to something your mother did when she was pregnant with you or something she was exposed to because you didn't have that normal decline in eggs from six to seven million at five months to one to two million at nine months. So you have more eggs. More eggs come out of the vault every month. The brain doesn't know you have more eggs. So it is sending out the same amount of FSH as it normally would for a normal egg count. But that FSH is getting diluted amongst the more eggs that have come out. If we can imagine the same signal is going to 20 eggs or it's going to 30 eggs. So FSH is the thing that basically picks the yeah, egg. Yeah, it's like food for the egg. Okay, it's the thing that selects the one egg and gives it, um, waters it like a plant. Exactly. So you have the same amount coming, but there's more eggs eating it. Okay. So nobody's getting a strong enough signal to grow reliably, predictably, meaning you're not going to have that regular predictable cycle. When an egg grows, that's when your body makes estrogen. That's when your ovary makes estrogen. And the ovary is a hormone producing factory. Everybody thinks about the ovary as, oh, it's what makes the eggs, but it's real job. It's real love is to make hormones. It makes estrogen as it grows the egg. It makes progesterone after you ovulate. If you have too many small eggs come out of the vault, there's not enough FSH to stimulate any of them. The ovary is not making estrogen and it gets bored. So what happens is the pathway to make testosterone becomes upregulated. It starts making testosterone in its bored time. What testosterone does in women with PCOS is it then increases the risk of insulin resistance. It increases abdominal weight. So not that maybe like female body shape we think about, like weight on the hips and thighs, but more of that man beer belly style abdominal weight. You also then are gonna have increase in acne, facial hair, and then even male pattern baldness. So you start to see that you have these androgen symptoms that are negatively impacting quality of life immensely. And then as you gain weight, the estrogen confuses the brain and it sends out even less FSH. So you get into this really cyclic pathway where the insulin resistance and the testosterone change your entire body's metabolism. But you're not going to go in and make yourself have less eggs. So how do you combat PCOS? One way from if you're trying to get pregnant is to try to give medications that have the brain send out a stronger signal of FSH. So you might have heard of medications like Clomid or Letrozole. These medications tell the brain to send out more FSH. So in essence, that's what we call ovulation induction, helping somebody ovulate by having the brain send out a stronger signal. But what we try to do if you're in this PCOS pathway is break down some of the production of testosterone from the ovary, stop that cycle, and try to see if you can reverse back into having healthier, normal cycles. So sometimes that's from medications like metformin. You can have spironolactone, which is a medication that stops testosterone production. This is why women with PCOS are given birth control pills because birth control pills, one, can come in and provide estrogen and progesterone, but two, they also make something in the liver called sex hormone binding globulin that binds to testosterone, drops your testosterone levels, and clinically they make you feel better. Your acne goes away. Some of those androgen signs go down and it can help break the pattern. And I see that people with PCOS, when they come off the birth control pill, they actually ovulate more regularly at the beginning and then it starts to get worse as more time goes on as their androgens start to rise back up to their baseline because the birth control pill was keeping them down. So focusing on some of the other factors that really influence insulin resistance and hormone production in PCOS, PCOS patients, I always tell my patients, it's, it's like a 
teeter-totter of balance, meaning when you're too stressed or you're, you're exposed to something, it can tip your hormones into not ovulating. So you have to view that system as just very sensitive. Extra stressors like the cortisol that's coming in really influence people with PCOS a lot, as does being overweight. And that's why there's a lot of information on trying to encourage PCOS patients who are overweight to lose weight. Importantly, not all women with PCOS are overweight. You definitely can be thin, be born with a lot of eggs inside your vault and have the exact same problem. And I want to stress that some people, even if you live the healthiest life, you don't ever see inflammation, you're not stressed, but you have PCOS, it's a disease, and you may not ever get to a place where you can reliably or regularly ovulate in your reproductive years that you're wanting to, and that's not your fault. It's not a failure of you. It's not your fault. Some people truly do need intervention to try to help them get pregnant. And those interventions are freezing their eggs, IVF, those kinds of things? Yep, ovulation induction, freezing your eggs, IVF. When you scan the ovaries, can you see PCOS? Mm -hmm. PCOS is diagnosed by having two out of three criteria. So number one, seeing a lot of eggs on ultrasound. Yeah. Number two, having high androgen signs. So whether it's a blood value of testosterone that's higher than a normal female should have, or just having acne or hair growth. Mm -hmm. And then three is irregularity or absent periods. So two out of the three of them. So if you have irregular periods and acne, you've met the diagnostic criteria. What causes PCOS? You talked about maybe it's something your mother might have done. but it's There's just a lot of thought that PCOS is largely genetic or epigenetic, meaning that when you're a baby inside your mom, that that environment influenced a lot of how your ovary is going to function later. And there's a huge correlation between different exposures or whether it is insulin resistance in pregnancy and then women being born later in life with a higher risk of PCOS. Certainly, you can back into PCOS by, by being overweight. And what I mean by that is often patients will present They'll be diagnosed with PCOS, but the etiology is a little bit different. If you're very obese, that fat is going to make estrogen. The brain is going to send out less FSH. You're not going to be ovulating because it's not a strong enough signal. And the ovaries are going to start making testosterone because they're bored. So you have a PCOS presentation, but that mechanism is not really necessarily having a large number of eggs in your vault. When we have syndromes, we have to remember polycystic ovarian syndrome. Syndromes are based on the symptoms you present with. So often syndromes do have different origins for how they present. Is there a way to completely heal from polycystic ovary syndrome? For some people, yes, but... Have you seen that? Yes, I have seen people, but most of it correlates within all women at some point you're still losing eggs every month, right? So at some point you are going to get to a number where the eggs that are coming out of the vault are a number that the brain is going to respond to. So what's interesting is I'll have people say, I cured my PCOS. And I say, well, really you just are age 38. And at this point, you don't have enough remaining eggs to, to cause this dysfunctional problem anymore. The eggs that are coming out are now responsive to your hormones. Yes, they did do lifestyle changes and improve things and probably made it so that their ovaries could respond to those signals. So I think it goes together. But PCOS women still go through menopause at the same age. They're born with more eggs and they go through menopause at the same age. So what's happening is they're simply just losing eggs at a more rapid pace because they have more. And what impact does that have on your ability to get pregnant? When you have more eggs, the number one is what we call anovulation. So the irregular periods or lack of having a period altogether. That is one of the top causes of infertility, and certainly PCOS is the top cause of that. It's important to say that not having a period is not normal. So if you're taking birth control or contraception, we'll just put that in a different category for a minute. But if you're not taking any hormones and you're not having a period, it is extremely bad for your health on both ends. And what I mean by this is it's either because your body has PCOS, and has all of these little follicles making a tiny bit of estrogen each day. And in that scenario, you're not making your normal hormones, but also you're at risk for metabolic disease, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, but also that constant estrogen production 
even though it's not high levels, but it's enough to confuse the brain, is stimulating the lining of the uterus to grow. And if you never ovulate, you don't make progesterone, so there's never the signal to shed or to bleed the lining. Cancer. It's cancer. So endometrial cancer is a very significant risk in women with PCOS who do not have periods. And this is why you will see people come in and say that you need to take progesterone or you must be on birth control pills because we've got to give you that progesterone in some form or fashion to bleed off those cells so that they don't develop into cancer. So there must be a pretty strong link then between PCOS and... Endometrial cancer, uterine cancer, yes. If you think about the other end of when people are not having periods, so I'm exercising and I lost my periods for three to four years. You're not making any estrogen during that time. Your brain shut off those FSH signals. The ovary never made estrogen from those eggs. And having low estrogen is detrimental to your long-term health. We see this even when women go through menopause at the normal age, right? Suddenly, you now have an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, osteoporosis, dementia, Alzheimer's once you've entered menopause because estrogen was protective against all of those. If you had that estrogen or that lack of estrogen even earlier in life, those risks, especially bone disease, osteoporosis, hip fractures later in life, they can be extremely high. So it's very important that women know that if you're not having periods, that it's harmful for your full body health. Very often I see young women in their 20s say, I'm not having a period, but who wants to bleed every month anyway? So not a big deal. But their brain's not functioning as great as it can. Having estrogen helps the brain think sharp and be productive. And if you're constantly lacking estrogen, you're going to be fatigued, feel cloudy, you're not going to feel like yourself. Replacing estrogen in somebody whose ovaries are not making it, whether it's because the brain's not sending the signals to or you're simply out of eggs early, replacing estrogen is extremely important for your quality of life and your longevity. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.